there's a phrase in Buddhism called like wordless wonder. And it's what you get to in meditation. You're not actually thinking, you're in flow. But then there's something about that clarity that like sparks something else. You have to kind of mess around to like discover your next thing. And when I'm making, when I'm drawing, when I'm painting, the actual making, I'm just like, I'm in a wordless wonder. All design in and of itself influences each other. Architecture, traveling, fashion, whatever I'm reading really influences. I don't think anything is truly useless from pop culture to philosophy. I think everyone should know Cardi B and everyone should probably read Heidegger. <laughs> so, As a kid, if you were to ask me like, what do you wanna be when you grow up? It was either an archeologist or a fashion designer. And I think it's funny that I found like a medium in that. In college, I started taking a small metals class and I just loved it. I found like my niche in jewelry. Jewelry embodies personal style. It embodies your values, the history of yourself, the legacies of your family. It keeps a commitment. It's the epitome of beauty. What do we choose as a culture to preserve? What is it that we choose to value, to encapsulate, and to hand down? What has lasted the test of time that tells us a story of a lost civilization? Jewelry history is absolutely incredible. It is the oldest art form on earth. It predates cave paintings by tens of thousands of years. But yet still, it took me a while to reconcile something. And that was, am I making something that's purely aesthetic? Why would I make something that's just beautiful? Is that just superficial? I believe we are meaning makers. We as human beings infuse meaning into all objects. One thing about jewelry is that it does tell generational stories. When I look at someone's hands that are filled with rings, I know that there's something meaningful about each of those pieces. It's just so deeply personal. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12, two. I don't wanna to conform to the patterns. I don't wanna to conform to norms just for the sake of it. I don't wanna be in an industry and just continue to do business as usual because that's how it's been done. I feel a deep conviction and a charge that it's like my call to be a light in a space. The jewelry industry is due for a complete and utter overhaul. I want to see more diversity and economic diversity, more transparency in terms of the way people do business, more ethical, fair trade mining practices, which governments actually enforce. It's a great industry, but we still have a long way to go. When I graduated school, I was like, how do I actually get my creative endeavors off the ground? I wanted to create the impossible. It was a lot of jobs, like meeting me at Starbucks to look at diamonds. I don't know how they trusted me. I'm so glad they did, thank you. Whatever little bit I made, I would buy some extra tools. And it was really, really slow built. I never found a mentor. I got swindled a lot bad deals because I'm a woman, because I was naive, because I didn't know some of the pricing. I didn't wallow in it. You know, I'm just like, all right, know better, do better. Now I'm sharper. It took over, over 11 years before I could open my store. It was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and I'm so grateful. 
every single day. Adornment in Theory is a independently owned jewelry store in Chicago, Illinois. We specialize in unique jewelry that tells a story, specifically from BIPOC designers, Black, Indigenous, people of color. I wanted to do something different, something fresh and new and surprising. I think we did it. Being a great business owner does take a lot of grit and perseverance. It does take a lot of passion. We have great American qualities like entrepreneurship and independence, but the whole idea of self-made needs to be burned to the ground. It's just not true, you know, like I bootstrapped this operation and I did it all on my own and I want to thank me for being me, for believing in me. It takes a community to build these things. It takes everyone. Now, what nobody can take from you is your grit, your determination, the vision you're casting for your life, your, your discipline. But if you are just trying to be a business owner in a silo, I think that it's very easy to lose your way. Ultimately, at the end, it's community that takes care of each other. Whether that's other business owners, I think having friends in your life that want to see you flourish and thrive in who you are, that's a cherished gift. I have good friends. I have great family and community. I can't fail.